Welcome, friends, to this daily devotion. I'm Pastor Mark, and along with Pastor Wesley, we serve the United Methodist Church of New Lenox, and we welcome you to this time where we can join together to grow closer in love of God and neighbor. Take a deep breath, breathing in God's presence, breathing out the concerns of the day, that we may know God is with us, that we may come to the cross, lay our burdens down, and be raised up to new and eternal life, now and always. Hear the affirmation in our petition. For I, the Lord your God, hold your right hand. It is I who say to you, do not fear, I will help you. Do not fear, you worm Jacob, you insect Israel. I will help you, says the Lord. Your Redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. Isaiah 41, 13 and 14. When nothing goes our way, look at me, O God. Do not remove your gaze from me. Hold me near to you, lest I pass away and am no more. Friends, our theme this week is when nothing goes our way. When nothing goes our way, how do we respond in the midst of everything spiraling out of control? Our reflection today comes from Reuben Job. There are times in our lives when nothing seems to go as planned. Times when day after day we are faced with difficulties and darkness, no matter how much we long for lighter loads and light for our pathway. There are other times when we come from a spectacular high moment and suddenly find ourselves hanging on to hope by our fingernails. While such a situation can be distressing, it is good to remember that we are not the first to experience darkness, difficulty, disappointing surprises in the midst of faithful and sunny days. Chapter 6 in Mark's Gospel reports the rejection Jesus encountered in his hometown, the first missionary venture of the Twelve, the death of John the Baptist, feeding the 5,000, Jesus walking on water, and healing the Genesaret. <clears throat> Excuse me. In this one chapter we are confronted with the widest range of human emotion and experience, great miracles as well as great disappointment. Our lives may be a little steadier and the peaks and valleys a little bit more subdued than what Jesus and the Twelve experienced. However, we do live through those periods when nothing seems to go our way, when the winds of life seem to be against us, when we are working hard but getting nowhere. So it was with the disciples as they strained at the oars against the adverse wind. Then Jesus appeared to them and uttered the words we all want to hear in the terror of our personal storm. Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Mark 6.50 The storm was over the moment Jesus was recognized by the disciples, and soon the men found themselves at their destination. One of the best times for us to cultivate the nearness of God emerges when nothing is going our way. Such an experience may sharpen our ability to see God at work in our own midst and in our own lives. Remember that we are not alone when things are not going our way, as we are not alone when things are going our way. Each situation gives us opportunity to pay attention to God's presence and call God for help. <clears throat> Thank you. Bishop Job for that reading today. So our theme, when nothing goes our way, where do we go? I think that's what Bishop Job is trying to get us to think about. Where do we go? Often when things are going, not going our way, when things are spiraling out of control, when we're faced with adversity, stress, conflict, 
we go to our old bad habits. We go to our vice of choice. We go to whatever we think will fill that part of our lives. Whatever distraction, whatever fantasy, whatever addiction. Instead of going to the place where we know we will find rest, the place where we know that our burden will be lightened and our yoke will be removed. It's real simple, it seems, for the Christian to know uh, and and for faithful of all traditions. And yet we struggle it. Our human condition struggles against it. We want to do it ourselves. I think really that comes down to it. We think we should be able to get over it. We should be able to control it. We should be able to call the shots. We should have the ability ourselves to pull ourselves up from the brink. But sometimes we can't. And so do we stop, acknowledge that we need help, and go to the source of help in this day and all days. Our scripture reading today comes from Mark chapter 6. Verses 45 through 52. Right then, Jesus made his disciples get into a boat and go ahead to the other side. After saying goodbye to the crowds, Jesus went up to the mountain to pray. Evening came and the boat was in the middle of the lake, but he was alone on the land. He saw his disciples struggling. They were trying to row forward, but the wind was blowing against them. Very early in the morning, he came to them, walking on the lake. He intended to pass them by. When they saw him walking on the lake, though, they thought he was a ghost, and they screamed. Seeing him was terrifying to all of them. Just then he spoke to them, Be encouraged. It's me. Don't be afraid. He got into the boat and the wind settled down. His disciples were so baffled, they were beside themselves. That's because they hadn't understood about the miracle of the loaves. Their minds had been closed so that they resisted God's ways. I mean, isn't that just kind of reinforcing what we were just talking about? The disciples were living in the midst of it. They had just experienced feeding of thousands with a few loaves and fish. And they still were afraid. They still were overwhelmed by the first storm that they encountered. The very first storm. And Jesus came to them. And in my experience, Jesus often comes to us in the midst of our storms. Now, we have to recognize his voice. We have to open ourselves to it. But in essence, I believe Christ is always there in all of us. That divine spark is within all of us at all times. That image of Jesus knocking at the door, that image of Jesus being right there when and you not noticing until you turn around. Those all try to tell us the same thing. When we recognize that that great divine love is there when we need it because it's there all the time. We can depend on it. We can be encouraged. We can not be afraid. We can move on in ways that are life-giving and affirmative. And hopefully, as the disciples did, reach our destination. Move through the storm. It won't always be easy. The disciples' lives were not easy. Their mission and journey were not easy, as we are about to read over the next week. Nothing about Christianity offers you ease of life. But here's the thing. 
whether you're Christian or not, whether you're faithful or not, whether you're spiritual or not, whether you have great divine understanding or not, whether you're put together or not, whether you're privileged or not, the human condition, the human experience, is there are ups and downs for everybody. Everybody. As I said, even the most privileged eventually experience suffering, pain, disappointment, loss, anxiety, fear, stress. No one's free from it. What we believe and what we hope is that when faced with it, we turn to the God who is there to encourage us, to hold us up, and help us get to our destination. Friends, as we begin our week, we come to it with praise and thanksgiving, acknowledging that all comes from God, all is God, and all praise be to God above. Take a minute and thank God for the little things, the big things, and everything in between. Now let us join in the doxology. Praise God, from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Let us pray the prayer that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, I leave you with these words from John Wesley. O Lord, may nothing dwell in my soul but your pure love alone, till my every thought, word, and act be love. Yes, Lord, may your love possess me whole. You're my joy, my treasure, my crown. Until next time, friends, God bless. Goodbye. Amen.